Their saludo vale es changes that came out today, they are gonna be live on next reset, but I, I figured this time to actually talk about them because they seem substantial, at least some of them. Yeah, let's complain a little bit and then I'm gonna do a tier list of what I think are gonna be the best specs because of that. So first of all, Life Bloom got nerfed the cost. Uh, this is like, Life Bloom is like an amazing spell, but uh, I've been healing on my druid uh, lately. I wish I could use it more. Uh, this is insane, like half the mana cost of the thing for the same amount of healing. You're gonna see Druid just spamming Life Bloom now, which is probably not a healthy thing either, but yeah, as you can see, the mana cost of Nourish, basically Nourish is a single target heal when you get a hot on somebody you get bonus healing. Uh, it was already a heal to go and now you can actually do it for cheaper on top of the cheaper Life Blooms. So I am pretty sure we're gonna see like a, a Life Bloom spamming spec that also uses Nourish for the tank. I don't think they needed a, a huge buff, honestly, this is way too big. But, but they did have mana issues, that's for sure. Living Seed got buffed a little more, which is fine. Nobody really uses Living Seed, people just go for Furious Stone Rage to do uh, free rats, but it's whatever. And Moonkin form, they are fixing the mana cost problems that Moonkins are struggling quite a lot and increases periodic damage of Moonfire by 50%. Will we see a Moonkin spec where they go Moonfire, Sunfire and then just do their, their Starfire thingy? And he, this is another big one right here, the Moonkin can now innervate on Moonkin form. That's a huge issue because it costs mana to innervate people because they gotta shift out and back in. Uh, that, that is a, a, like, what, a thousand mana that you gotta waste? Uh, I don't even know. It's a lot of mana that they are losing when they gotta innervate somebody. So being able to innervate in Moonkin form is huge. Of course, they can also rest with that. So that's that's really good. That's the TBC change that happened in TBC. It was pretty stupid to begin with. Also, look at this right here. Another buff for the Moonkin. When you get a Fury of Stone Rage proc in Moonkin form, uh, you're gonna be able to cast the instant healing touch on Moonkin form. 30% less damage, they lose a 30% damage bonus on Raptor Strike for wielding two weapons of the same type. Okay, I'm gonna do a little math for you to see how big this nerf is and why I think it's not a huge deal because people have been talking about it I, I, or the, the hunters are already complaining, you should, you know that. But le let's do a little math here. We are in the Trusty Crown Calculator. If you get a 30% damage bonus, that's the same as saying that your damage modifier is 1.3, okay? If you remove that modifier, your damage that you're doing with Raptor Strike now is the same as doing 1 divided God damn it, I hate this calculator. 1 divided by 1.3. So this is the multiplication. This is a 24%, 23% damage nerf, right? Because it's like uh, this minus 1. There you go. Minus 23%. There you go. 23% damage loss on Raptor Strike. Okay, now I, got, I went to the logs of the best hunter in the world right here. As you can see, Raptor Strike is his main ability by far. Uh, there is here 21 po because remember they hit with both weapons so it counts twice. Uh, Raptor Strike is 50% of their damage. So if you do uh, 0 0.5, 50%, times 0 0.23, it's an 11.5% damage nerf. It, it's, let's say, let's round it out, let's say it's a 10% nerf, okay? So let's go to the Archon now. Your average hunter is doing 438 damage, and now with this nerf, they are gonna be doing about 390 DPS, which will take him out of S tier, probably into high A tier, or right behind the Warlock right here. That is still a very dominant, very respectable spec, but not the best one in the game anymore. Sadly, there is no marksmanship buffs, so actual normal hunters that don't want to play this thing are still screwed. One possibility that I am looking at, and I might probably talk about it when I do the tier list, is that hunters are gonna be actually uh, trying to go beast mastery and stack pet damage bonus instead of their own now, and just do the same raptor st thing, the raptor strike spec, but meleeing with a pet instead of the lone wolf meta that we've seen maybe that could get their dps up a little now there is two changes of the paladin and we already got an announcement that one of these changes are gonna be overturned this is not gonna happen this one right here uh, silo martyrdom whatever, whatever this one is not happening okay they cancel this one let's talk about the one that is actually happening crusader strike this holy damage instead of physical damage ignoring armor and is now affected by holy damage prevention Crusader Strike is still considered a melee attack and not a spell, so 
Basically, holy damage is the most broken damage type in the game, because there is no holy resistance in the game. That means that it is impossible to partially resist. So basically, what this is, is because it's considered a melee attack, it affects your melee hit, uh, you have the same chance of landing it as before, it cannot be resisted, so it will 100% go through armor. And that's pretty huge. Remember that the big problem with bosses, and we're gonna talk about this for a minute also, is that armor values are too high, so melee classes are struggling. So now paladins can ignore armor, that's gonna mean they are gonna do like 5% more DPS or so. Now for the rogue, remember when I talked about the, the rogue tank, that I was uh, saying that the rogue tank uh, had two main issues that needed to be fixed in phase 2. They kinda did. One of them was the broken combo point system and the AoE. They got a decent AoE now. Uh, redirect is what they got. It was a one minute cooldown ability that made you ignore when you swap targets you didn't lose your combo points basically. Okay, it was a one minute cooldown which it was better but it wasn't a huge deal because if you're tanking trash you want to swap targets a lot more than that, right? So now it's only a 10 second cooldown so that's really really good. It also doesn't affect the, the global cooldown which is okay. I guess it's better, but it's not a huge difference. The main thing is they are not, it's gonna be a 10 second cooldown. That's six times less cooldown than before. That's insane. They are getting a buff right here. More combo points and base energy cost reduced to their abilities. And here the threat bonus is increased. So tanks are gonna produce 30% more threat. That's pretty insane actually. So yeah, here comes the one spec that was worse than the bear is now better. <laughs> Look at that. Last change we gotta talk about is the shaman right here. Uh, 200 mastery is also gonna give them increased chance to hit with spells now. Uh, spell damage is not a huge part of the rotation uh, on enhancement, but it will affect your, your DPS uh, quite a bit. I would say probably another 5% more damage or something like that. Now shamanistic rage will just be maximum mana for the shaman instead of uh, attack power. This is a gigantic nerf to enhancement because enhancement doesn't run any intellect. So yeah, uh, shamanistic rage will be now like a best in slot room for elemental and, and resto and that is probably gonna increase the popularity of resto because if they can generate more mana uh, same with elemental, if they can generate more mana they are gonna be more valuable relative to the enhancement shaman. The enhancement shaman was slightly behind elemental in damage and this right here may be the one thing that worries it. Spirit of the alpha will give 20% attack power if they cast a spell on a target other than themselves. Oh look at that, that that's an overturn of the, of the nerf right here to shamanistic rage. 20% attack power for an enhancement shaman. Gosh darn, that's what, 10% more damage in total? I, I don't know, I didn't do the math of what's the proportion between base weapon damage and attack power that they got. I, I don't play an enhancement shaman, Th that's insane. Now I understand the nerf. I, I, uh, it's too early to predict on the element the enhancement shaman, but this is gonna move them up quite a lot. Earth shield got more healing and it has nine charges and it's also cheaper. Apparently nobody used uh, uh, earth shield. Here's the problem with earth shield guys. And why shamans think is bad when it's one of the best heals in the game. Earth Shield, uh, the healing of Earth Shield counts towards the tank instead of you. That doesn't sound like a lot, but it basically means that you are giving the tank free AoE threat when he gets healing from it. So yeah, this is kind of bonkers. We're gonna see like the top leals, the top guilds abusing this a lot more, and your normal shaman is probably not gonna be able to tell much of a difference because it doesn't show up in the mirrors and that's all they care about. But that's huge. Then they fix some power source bu uh, bugs, so that would mean they are gonna get a little more mana. Uh, they are they were not really struggling with mana before, so I don't think it's gonna be a, a big issue. Uh, Shamanistic Rage is good because you give other people mana, not because you get mana. Uh, at worst case scenario, Elemental and Resto had Water Shield, which is pretty busted, so... Yeah, I, I guess this is good. Don't get me wrong, it, it's good, but it's not a big deal. The cooldown of Ancestral Guidance drop down. Uh, that is also pretty good. It, it means that they just can AOE heal a little better. Overall, if I gotta be honest, the only like class that makes sense so far is the Shaman. I mean, like the Hunter nerf is, is a start, I guess, but that's a 10% nerf. Uh, you can argue if that's enough or not, I don't know. Uh, Druid ones, uh, Resto makes sense, Boomkin is whatever. Uh, still no bear changes, so bear is gonna be completely useless this phase. Cat is gonna be pretty bad too. And Red Paladin buff, because, because we cannot allow Paladins to be bad, guys. That just cannot happen. So with what we know, let's, let's make a, a quick tier list here, okay? Frost Mage, still a meme. Frost Mage is useless, no reason to play a Frost Mage over any other kind of spec in, in the game right now, so we're gonna put it on meme spec. 
Ok, let's see. Holy Paladin. Holy Paladin is doing, is doing ok. I, I wouldn't say it's great, but I wouldn't say it's bad either. Like, nobody's gonna complain that they got a Holy Paladin in the raid. We're gonna put it on B. Protection Paladin. One of the highest threats in the game. They can AOE. They are the only class in the alliance that can comfortably solo tank Nomeregan. Uh, no changes, but they are still amazing. So, Prot Paladin goes right there. Look at the icon for red, guys. <laughs> uh, red is still mediocre. I don't know how much Crusader Strike is gonna impact them. I don't think it's gonna be a huge deal for them. Uh, maybe like 5% more DPS. That still makes them pretty mediocre. The Discipline Priest remains still a staple in, in the game and they are gonna remain that way. They are good both in PvE and PvP now. And yeah, their only problem is they don't have a, a lot of mana. They have mana issues. But the thing is, as the tier progresses and uh, guilds get better at killing the stuff, they die faster, you know, they take less damage from the AOE, you know, as the guild gets better, discipline is gonna be better and better and better, so yeah. I've seen one raid of a guy solo healing and it was a discipline priest, so yeah, that's probably gonna be the meta. Holy priest, on the other hand, is about... about the same, I don't know, I don't play much priest, honestly. Uh, either one of them, uh, people are happy to take him. Priest is high, higher scaling, so we might see more of that. The Shadow Priest surprised everybody and became like a decent AoE and single target spec. It's still not the best out there, it's like 4th DPS, but it's pretty high up there, so yeah. All three specs of the Priest are killing it right now, so th that's, a, that's a good sign. Meanwhile, let's talk about the row here. Uh, there is three specs, as you know. The only real valuable spec that people play is Assassin, and it's just okay, it's not even great. Uh, the changes that the rogue is getting are not substantial at all, so yeah, uh, it's gonna stay there. Uh, the other two, meme. Now the Boomkin is getting some nice mana uh, buffs and, and a little uh, Moonfire buff. It's probably not gonna be a huge change to their DPS, I think they are being cautious with their balance changes. Uh, because they want to do one balance update a week, so they want to slowly change the classes so they don't break stuff anymore. I don't know, I, I guess it works, but yeah, the, the monkey is just mediocre. The only thing that why it's here is because uh, we got so many broken casters that the 3% crit actually matters. That's it. Elemental is getting a, a huge buff in mana generation. And Elemental was about better than the Wunkin right here, but now for the mana and utility, of course, they can bring Wind Fury, Wind Fury Totem now, and since Feral Druids are kinda bad, we are gonna see a lot of shamans. Elemental is going up here. Also, they got the Spirit of the Alpha buff, which now increases attack power, so Enhancement... Enhancement was 10 DPS behind on Elemental, and 20% attack power. I don't know how much it's gonna matter, but there's one thing for sure, and that is enhancement is gonna get much better than elemental, so yeah, we're gonna put it here. The rest of Shaman got a small buff, it's not a huge buff, but rest of Shamans are excellent anyway, they got chain heal, they, they got all, all the utility that all the other Shamans got. Uh, people run rest of Shamans all the time, they are excellent, they are great, we're gonna put them here in S tier. Now the Warlock has a similar problem that, than the Rogue has, and he only has like one viable spec, it's an excellent spec, it's the, the the third best DPS probably gonna be the second one now. It's right behind the Fire Mage in damage charts. And Warlocks are just amazing. They provide the courses that all the casters need. They, you need to take a Warlock in the raid and they are amazing. So we're gonna put you on S tier. Meanwhile, Affliction is kinda bad and the Monology is just C tier. It's just acceptable. Now the Warrior. The Warrior got no buffs because Blizzard is terrified of what's gonna happen if they buff it just a little. As you guys know, in the class tuning, did I talk about this? No, Merigan, they, the, they are reducing the armor values of Thermaplog and Crowd Pommeler. So warriors are gonna be doing 10% more damage to the boss. That doesn't mean 10%, it means more, because that affects rage generation, like I explained in my old warrior video. So yeah, warriors are gonna be performing about 15% better on this, 20% depending on the gear that they have. That's gonna take them up a notch, however they are kinda in the middle and all the other fights they are still gonna be pretty bad for it. There is always a need for a warrior, they are great utility, especially when people transition to solo tanking. You always wanna bring a warrior to help with the trash and with the tank mechanics and so on and so forth, so I'm gonna put them on A tier even if their damage doesn't reflect it yet. Fury is just god awful, nobody plays Fury, that's easy. And Prot Warrior, okay? Prot Warriors are okay, they are nowhere near the, the Paladin or the Shaman there, but they are so much better than the Bear, I can tell you that much. And uh, yeah, they are workable, I've seen many guilds solo tank with a Warrior, so 
Yeah, I'm gonna put them on, on, on B. The Feral Cat does mediocre damage and their one redeeming utility, their one redeeming quality, which was that they could give Wind Fury to the raid, is now with shamans. So if you're in the Horde, the Feral Druid is trash. If you're Alliance, the Feral Druid is about here because you want Wind Fury. So yeah, I'm gonna put it in the middle as a compromise. How about that? The Feral Tank is completely awful. The, the, they buffed them. It was it didn't matter. The buffs were bad. They made no sense. It didn't affect any of the core issues affecting the tank. They are too squishy and their threat is garbage. They only got decent threat every 3 minutes when they got Berserk up for 15 seconds and then it's back to garbage. Uh, feral Tank is unplayable. Uh, I'm gonna put it on meme. I, I am a Feral Tank and I had to reroll this tier because it's so bad. The rest of Druid on the other hand, not only it was already a, a really good healing class, now it got buffed to hell. The Life Bloom buff is insane. That's gonna make Life Bloom spec. Uh, they are gonna be one of the best raid healers in the game. If not the best raid healer in the Alliance, they are the best raid healer by far. So yeah, they, they are gonna be very, very desirable right now, even more than before. They were already good. Now the Beast Mastery Hunter, this one is a little, a little complex because not a lot of people play it, but their damage seems to be ar around this area, like in the middle, a slightly better than Marksmanship as a matter of fact, but uh, this is still not great. If we see like the nerf of the Melee Hunter, we I wanna see like people theory craft the Melee Hunter Beast Mastery build, there is such a thing. We're gonna see how that works out, but so far, yeah, we're gonna have to put it about in, in, in B. Marksmanship should be about there too. The Survival Hunter, as we talked about in the in the start of the video, they got they used to be here and now they got a 10% DPS nerf uh, because of the map I showed you. So they are gonna be comfortably right ahead of the Shadow Priest, right here on A tier. They are still gonna be very dominant, very good, very competent. And nobody's gonna gonna be mad that there's a melee hunter in the raid at all. But they are not broken as before, so I guess that's a compromise. If they were to nerf all the armor values on all the bosses, we might see the, the melee hunter blow up again because that's the only thing holding it back again. Now the arcane mage, his DPS is about here, but as you guys know, the arcane mage can off heal very competently. And there is a lot of utility in that. Of course, the arcane mage can also go full healer. And it is decent in that situation. It is very flexible. If you are arcane, you can go from healer to DPS, depending what the fight requires. So for example, you see a lot of top guilds having an arcane mage DPS. And then the arcane mage during mechanical menagerie, which is the hardest fight to heal in the raid. He's gonna off heal that fight and then go back to DPS. Uh, very utility, very utility centric. Everybody likes a mage and arcane is doing okay. Not as okay as the freaking Fire Mage, which is the top DPS without question now, once again, in the leaderboards. The melee hunter is dead, so that means Fire is king. So it's at the top of S tier. And that's gonna be the tier list right now. I know, I, I don't wanna come off as a sore, as a sore loser on the Valence game right there, because my class, the Feral Tank, is absolute garbage. But I do think Blizzard messed up the balance of this tier quite a lot. They seem to be taking steps to fix it, but I am gonna say what I said before again. PTRs used to exist because of this reason. I don't know how people got so mad at the PTR like it's a big deal right now. No spoiler, guys. Who the... Uh, is, are there actual people that actually believe that? Like, I mean, like, actually... Like, you know, I remember when y'all guys were like two years ago pretending that you cared about hardcore and it was so fun and hilarious. Uh, do you gotta pretend that no spoilers is a real thing now like you did with hardcore? Is that a thing now? They seem to be trying to fix it, so that's something more than we can say about retail. So yeah, I guess I'm not gonna complain too much. Subscribe, leave a like, join the Discord, and thank you for watching!